Welcome back, computer science students. Another video in our inheritance series. Um, inheritance is like is a tricky concept, has lots of implications. Um, we've talked about the constructor and how it changes in our subclass. We've talked about our superclass um, and how to call superclass methods from within a subclass. Right within our Phoenix card holder class, we can call super um, to call super methods methods from our superclass. Um, we have to use super when we do when we write our constructor to make sure we call our super class as constructor. Um, we talked about inheriting methods, that the methods from the person class are all kind of invisibly copied or invisibly available um, to our Phoenix cardholder class, which extends person. We've talked about the ability, we have the ability to overload, if we choose to, um, inherited methods, and either one could be called. Um, and we now are going to talk about overriding. Um, and so overriding is a tricky concept and it leads to polymorphism, which is, a, which is another kind of interesting and cool thing that happens. Um, so these are pretty common terms you'll hear in object-oriented programming and they matter. They make a difference. Um, so, so let's dive in. We have um, overriding methods. So we've already kind of gotten a glimpse of it. We're going to go into this in more detail. Um, and so let's look at our uh, method overriding here. So since Phoenix card holder defines a get ID method, let's flip over and look at our get ID method. Um, Phoenix card holder defines this public string get ID um, because remember Phoenix card holder has an ID and person has an ID. So if we wanted to get the ID of a Phoenix card holder, we need a method for that, right? We need this method here. Um, and so let's clear all that off now that we've talked about it. And let's, let's dive in here. So we have get ID. But keep in mind, we already should have a get ID method, right? In our, in our person class, we have a public string get ID open and close parentheses. This is our method definition. It's our method header. Phoenix card holder class, exact same method header, down to even inputs. Um, so we can do this. This is allowed. Um, and there's reasons for it. And in fact, there's a really good reason for it in this case. Um, if I'm trying to get my Phoenix card holder's ID, I don't want to just get their person ID, right? I need to actually know their Phoenix card ID number, right? So imagine, imagine that this is how when you check out or, or verify or check in at, to the dining hall, that this is how they verify your ID. Well, you need to be able to get your Phoenix card ID. It's important. Um, and so we need to override this method. So when we do get ID for a person, we want to get just the person's ID. Um, but when we get ID for a Phoenix card holder, we need to get more than that, right? Uh, we need to get the person ID and the Phoenix card ID, or we may, we may need both. We may, so, so that's what this method is doing for us. Um, so let's look into it. Um, this is called overriding. So we have a get ID method with the exact same setup, the exact same public, exact same string, exact same get ID, exact same thing in parentheses. If the, if the inputs in parentheses were different, it's overloading. If they're the same, it's overriding. So we are overriding. Um, and so now in our code here, since we are overriding, um, we have a couple things that come up. This use of super again shows up. Um, and so what we want to do in our in our Phoenix card holder class is print out the person's ID and the Phoenix card ID. Uh, but in order to access the person's ID, um, unfortunately, I, I can't, you know, so I, I could do, uh, I, I could try to just print um, super.id which would be my super class's ID. Um, but my super class, in my super class, the ID is private. That means it cannot be accessed even in a subclass. Um, there's a separate keyword for that called protected, which we don't need to talk about. But um, for now, all we, all we should know is that since, since ID is private, the, the person class ID is private, I cannot go super.id. However, my super class does have a get ID method, which is public public string get ID. Um, and so if I wanted to get my person class's ID, I can call super.getID. Okay, so 
I can get my person class ID, and I can get my Phoenix card holder ID just by using ID. All right, nothing special to get the ID from the Phoenix card class. We do have to do something special to get it from our super class, um, and that is to call the get ID method or to, to use some public means of getting it. Okay, so person ID, Phoenix card ID, when we print it out, we get person's ID and Phoenix card holder's ID. So we've now overridden the method, um, and importantly, super is necessary here. Um, imagine if I got rid of super. Well, now my get ID method would call itself. Um, it's going to go to its own class first, not to the super class. And so you'd have a method calling itself, which is called recursion, and is a really complicated topic. In fact, the last one we talked about this semester. Um, and we don't want to do that. Let's just not go down that route right now. It would cause a lot of problems for us. Um, so just be really cautious. If you are overriding a method, making it exactly the same, and you want to call the same method from your super class, you have to do super.getID. Okay? Um, so it's the same idea down in our toString method. Um, we wanted to call toString, but specifically the toString from our super class, not this one again. Um, so again, super.getID gets the super class version of this overridden method. This is overridden. Um, so to get to it, we need to use super class. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's when you use super. You use super to specifically get um, the same method that you're already inside of, but instead of your version being repeated again, you get the super classes version of the method. So you get information about the person part of our Phoenix card holder. Okay, so we can get meal status for our Phoenix card holder. Let's look at what get meal status does. Um, one more one more example here before we dive into polymorphism in our next video. Um, so we create a method called get meal status for our Phoenix card holder, um, and it involves calling methods, get last name and get first name from our super class. Note, these do not need super.getLastName or super.getFirstName because there is not a get last name or a get first name in the Phoenix card holder class, so there's no chance for confusion. There's no chance that I could call the Phoenix card holder's version of get last name because it only exists in the person class. Okay, so no need for super here. So we can print out um, the person's ID, um, and we can print out how, whether, whether they have enough block meals, um, which would be a number greater than min meals, or whether they have a low number of meals. So maybe we just want to figure out how many meals we have. Are we running low? Are we doing OK? Um, and so you know, if, I, if, if the minimum is 0, if I set a warning to go off when I have 0 meals, well, then we're OK. Um, we are not below 0. Um, but if I set the warning to go off when I have 21 meals, well, by default, when we create our person, we have zero. So that would mean we get an alert. And so you, you can write some logic, you can do some things, you can solve problems in this, um, and also call super class methods. Um, so, you know, take some time, read through this meal, read through this method, make sure what it does makes sense with what makes sense with the printout. Um, and you could try, you know, feel free to add code, um, update the person's meals to be something other than zero, you know, set meals to set block meals to 20 and try a couple things with this get meal status method. Make sure that it makes sense to you. Um, being able to read and process and understand what code is doing is really, really helpful. So, so take a minute, try it out. Um, make sure that the get meal status method makes sense. Um, and make sure that you, you see how it's using a super class method without using the keyword super and why super is only required when there could be confusion as far as whether we're calling get ID for our subclass or our super class. And super helps get rid of that confusion um, and make sure we call the right get ID method or the right overridden method. Um, so we'll jump in next time and talk about what polymorphism is and how it relates to overridden methods. Um, and so I'll see you guys next time.